Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson five, titled Proteins. It is the second last of this unit, Nutrients, and is the second last nutrient that we're gonna talk about. We've just got vitamins and minerals left for the next unit, uh, pardon, lesson. Uh, as you can see above me, we've got our key points, amino acids, polypeptides, proteins, and then primary and secondary structure is what that is. Uh, we're going to focus a lot of time on amino acids, polypeptides, and proteins as they kind of build on one another. And this is going to be a theme that I'm going to try to mention throughout this lesson, is that uh, amino acids are like letters in our alphabet, polypeptides are like the words, and proteins are like the sentences. This is going to make some more sense I promise you as we go through, but if I'm going to write something at the top of my page and I'm going to refer back to it, amino acids equals letters, polypeptides equals words, and proteins equals sentences, and this will make sense. Let's jump in. Um, so, proteins include a diver uh, diversity of structures resulting in a wide arrange, uh, array of functions. They do many, many different things throughout your body. They are enzymes. Uh, enzymes are made of proteins. Uh, everything that does something in your body is essentially a protein, and they account for about 50% of the mass of most of your cells. That might be like a protein that carries stuff from one part to another, or a protein that makes energy, or a protein that uses energy. Uh, they function in terms of structural support, storage, transport, cellular communications in between cells, not like your phone, um, movement of different objects, and defense against foreign substances. So proteins are very, very important. Um, but you can't just eat a steak and then take that protein and use it. You need to take that steak, break it down into its very smallest parts, and then build it back up into something that you can actually use. And that's where these amino acids come in. Amino acids are the base building block of proteins. So we could break down all of our proteins into amino acids. Amino acids look like this every single time. They have a carbon in the middle. It's not always pink, but it's in the middle. They have what is known as an amino group here and a carboxyl group on the right side as well as an R group. The R group is what is always different. So the amino group, the H, and the carboxyl group are always the same and this R group changes. There are about 20 different possibilities for R. These are always the same, but R can be different. So amino acids are organic molecules with carboxyl, that's the C, and amino, that is the N, groups on each side. The amino acids differ in their properties due to differing side chains called R groups. So we can break down pro, uh, all the proteins that you eat into these small building blocks and they differ by what R is. So humans have 20 amino acids and 12 of them our body can manufacture, but eight of them have to come from what we eat. And remember when anything comes from what we eat only, they are essential. So there are 12 uh, non-essential amino acids and there are eight essential amino acids. There are 12 building blocks that you can make, but there are eight that you must eat uh, and ingest into your body so that you can use them. They are known as essential. So polypeptides. Polypeptides, and this is key point two, are unbranched polymers built from the same set of 20 amino acids. So essentially a polypeptide is an amino, is all the amino acids linked together and you can have many more than 20. It's all about the order of these 20 amino acids. They can be thousands long. Uh, a protein is a biologically functional molecule that consists of one or more polypeptides. So polypeptides are these branches uh, of amino acids and when you combine a bunch of these polypeptides together, you get proteins. And that's why I say that amino acids are the letters. Um, you can take letters and make them into words. So you can take amino acids and make them into polypeptides. You can then take those words and make them into sentences. You can take those polypeptides and make them into proteins. They can be different lengths, the words can be different sizes, 
It can be made of different amounts of amino acids, but in the end, we still come up with a sentence and something that makes sense and is functional. So amino acids would be considered our, our letters, polypeptides would be our words, and proteins would be our sentences, and that's how we build them and, and bring them together. So amino acids are linked by what we call peptide bonds, and a polypeptide is a polymer of amino acids. So um, pep polypeptide is a bunch of amino acids linked together by peptide bonds. Polypeptides range, range in length from a, few, um, from a few amino acids to more than a thousand uh, amino acids, which is a lot. Each polypeptide has a unique linear sequence of amino acids with a carboxyl end on one side and amino end on the other, just like our amino acids do. One side is going to be the carboxyl terminus and the other is going to be the amino terminus. This is how uh, two amino acids join together. Uh, you have the carboxyl group on one side and the amino acid uh, and the amino group on the other side. And they come together and we have a dehydration reaction, just like when we were um, linking our monosaccharides together. We lose a water and they become linked. This is the peptide bond between them. And I believe you have this diagram uh, with two amino acids coming together, losing a water, this uh, H2O, and becoming uh, joined together in a peptide bond. So protein structure and function. The first thing that we have to think about is it's a string of amino acids bond, uh, bound by peptide bonds. Uh, once the string of amino acids interacts with itself and its environment, then we have a functional protein that consists of one or more polypeptides precisely twisted and folded and coiled into a unique shape. So we take these amino acids and we link them together and then it starts to wrap around itself and make its shape so something that is actually able to be used. It twists, it folds, and it forms into, if it needs to be a tunnel, it will fold into a tunnel, and then it will move to its correct spot. If it needs to be like a giant arm that grabs stuff and moves stuff, this is simplified, obviously, it will do that. It will take that shape. That's what these proteins do. So the amino acids are the sequence, they form the polypeptides, which then twist and combine with other polypeptides to create a protein. The sequence of amino, of amino acids uh, determines a protein's three-dimensional structure, and its structure determines its function. As I've been saying, the structure of a molecule determines what job it's able to do. So there are two levels of protein structure, and this is key point four. There are primary and secondary structures. Primary structure is very easy to understand. It is just the sequence of amino acids, what comes after uh, the next, just like letters in a word. What comes next, what comes next, what comes next? That's the primary structure of a protein. The secondary structure is how it coils and how it folds. Does it make this type or does it make this type when it folds up? Does it coil around, does it fold in half? What does it do? So primary structure is the sequence and structure, secondary structure is how it folds uh, and coils into what it actually is supposed to function as. So the primary structure is the sequence of amino acids. You can't see it very well on there, but those are all specific different amino acids in a very, um, they, they're ordered in a specific way to make a particular protein. So the primary structure is the sequence of amino acids in a protein, like the order of letters in a long word. Um, primary structure is determined by your genetic information. It comes from your DNA, essentially. Uh, the secondary structure could come in two main forms. Uh, it is about the interactions between hydrogens and oxygens on different parts of this very long molecule. It can be thousands long. So when this end interacts with this end, you get something that coils up and folds together. So typical structures might include an alpha helix, um, which is like a spiral structure, or a beta pleated sheet, which essentially it might be look like a roof over and over again. It goes up and down and up and down. So secondary structure is how it all folds, while primary structure is the actual sequence of amino acids. Um, these very small changes that we can have in the primary structure or in the sequence of amino acids can cause a very, very large problem 
uh, when it comes to the protein. So for example, a slight change in the primary structure can affect a protein structure and ability to function. Sickle cell disease is an inherited blood disorder. It results from a single amino acid or a single letter being substituted in the protein hemoglobin. So hemoglobin transports uh, oxygen in our blood and this single change, this single typo, makes it impossible for it to do that and it actually turns the cells, um, they look like a curve and they're unable to carry oxygen. They can get stuck in your blood vessels and it's very, very painful and uncomfortable. So that's what normal blood cells would look like and sickle cell disease causes your blood cells to be curved like that. So that's no good at all. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look up some different disorders that can be caused by a lack of protein in the diet. Remember, we actually need to eat these things, break them down, and then build them back up to use them. And there's eight essential amino acids, eight essential building blocks that if we don't have, we can't use the other ones anyway. So I want you to do some research about what these disorders are and how they can affect the body. They are in the do now or the your job section below in your notes. Uh, so you'll have to do some research. But uh, after you're done that, it is the home stretch, the last lesson. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.